Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. We've got Larry on his mountaintop. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Oh, just up here watching the storms build around us day after day. Yeah, I tell you what, you you happen to be in an area, I think, where the uh, climate changing, and there is obviously climate change, not for the reason they're talking about, but there is. Uh, there's a prophecy here, too, that I got. I'm not, I think it's Whistleblower Jeff. Anyway, war will not be turned back now, for it is time. This is kind of an interesting uh, prophecy. I'm going to read all of it, but uh, it says, Do not be confused. This is the Lord talking, he says. War will not be turned back now, for it is time. Do not be confused by those proclaiming false peace. For war must come, it is written. The enemy knows that it is written even better than most of you do, and he will do all that I will allow him to do. He will be used to try the world and even most of my people. He knows his time is short. This is the time of separation between the wheat and the tares. Uh, The righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, if you go into the book of Revelation, you you find that, I believe it is, almost seven times. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Anyway, the evil plans of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. United States, for those, even if you don't believe it, are being allowed to go forward now. Do not be deceived by things you read and hear. Everything is not as it seems. Deception is at every turn. America, your leaders have taken you down the wide path that leads to destruction. And most of you don't know it. And even if you did, Most would not even care, as long as they keep their easy lifestyle of greed and excess in the land of plenty. This all shall soon end, strong as a God who judges you. America, I no longer fight for you or protect your military endeavors and conquests. You have had your way with the weaker nations of the world, but that is ending. Uh, The nations who seek to control now are backed by the ones who will unseat you from your throne, O queen of the nations. Your deceitful ways have been uncovered, and you will be stripped naked for all to see. Your false flags only fool the blind and deaf of your nation, but your enemies see the truth, and they shall have their way with you. America, there is no coincidence concerning the names of the ships, Abraham Lincoln and Ronald Reagan. They will suffer the same fates as their namesakes. When you see this, you will know that all I have spoken is true and that the complete destruction is coming to the once greatest nation of all. You will become lowest of all because you have turned your back on me, your first love. Cry, weep, and wail, my remnant, bride in America. And I'm going to, I won't read the rest of it. It's fairly long, but I wanted to touch on those things because America has followed after the false prophets the false preachers, teachers, and evangelists there. We have only a small remnant of people now in America that I guess the Lord would classify as righteous. The rest of them are not, and uh, they are in a deception. 
In fact, in the book of Revelation, Jesus says the latter-day church is in a deception. It knoweth not that it's unsaved, not going to heaven. It has no clue that it's not going to heaven. They're convinced that's where they're going. I have faith in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Uh, you better read the rest of it. I want to read this one to you, 2 Peter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. This is kind of interesting. They contradict. The word denying, look it up, it actually means contradict. In other words, in one breath they hold up Jesus Christ, but then they contradict everything he said, which is kind of an interesting puzzle to me anyway, that people who profess they're believers in Jesus Christ, actually contradict just about everything he said. I don't know how you get around that, but that's what they do, and they don't even know they're doing it, I think. Anyway, the many and many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Those are really, really nasty, nasty words if you're paying any attention to what Jesus is telling you through Peter. Uh, this is amazing. Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, and many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So, you know, when you read this verse to a lot of Christians, well, that's those Baptists down the street. Oh, that's those Methodists. No, that's those Lutherans. Oh, that's the Catholics. That's not true at all. It's not any of those. Doesn't have anything to do with it. It's all of them. What does Jesus say? I never knew you. People ought to really look up the word meanings of what he just said, that little phrase right there, I never knew you. He's telling you exactly who these people are. Okay, how do we solve the equation? Go to Revelation chapter 3. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a very wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I hope people are really listening, and I wish they would read it. I've been arguing this for I don't know how many years. People, wake up. I'm not making it up. I'm not a uh, heretic. I'm telling you exactly what Jesus Christ tells you. And all of this has been redacted. It has been removed by the fake preachers, teachers, and evangelists out there. They won't even touch this stuff. 
I was on a radio program out in California, and I read that verse in Matthew. I don't want to talk about that, he said. I don't want to talk about that. That's too dangerous. That's, that's too scary. I don't want to talk about that. And this guy's a very well-known man out there in Christendom. And I thought to myself, you're a leader of Christendom, and you don't want to tell your people this verse of Scripture? Yeah, maybe it'd be good if they were scared half to death. They ought to be. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, the beginning, the foundation. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Anyway, uh, Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door. It's a portal. It's within you, actually. And knock. Any man hear my voice and open the door. I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Now, that's an encounter. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 7? I never experientially came to know you. I did never meet you. We never had a conversation. Never happened. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. Isn't that interesting? Uh, then if you go to uh, John chapter 3, this is the condemnation. Only one, not a multitude of sins and all that. Only one, one condemnation only, light, divine love, has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hates the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. It doesn't say believe in the light. That's a prerequisite. It doesn't say have faith in the light. That's a prerequisite before you would ever come to the light. You'd have to believe. You'd have to have faith. Okay, I'm laying down stuff here for people that are listening. John chapter 17, and thou hast given him power over all flesh. This is Jesus speaking to his father, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. I'm going to read that one again. This is life eternal. He's going to define for you what salvation is, which is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. What did Jesus say in Matthew? I don't know you. This is eternal life. They might know thee, the true God, and Jesus Christ. You're supposed to know them. Anyway. Um, I just wanted to go through that because I get some really uh, I've had a couple of emails from people who said well you're a Gnostic you sound like you're esoteric you're obsessed with this knowing uh, I, have, I hope some of you have read uh, Pilgrim's Progress and in Pilgrim's Progress there's a little comment made in there it's not so little between faith and Christian. And, and uh, Christian is saying that salvation can only come from knowing who Jesus Christ is, meeting him face to face, knowing who he is. And faith says, oh, you are such a man of revelations. I, on the other hand, have my faith, and my faith is totally sufficient. These are the many who are sent away in Matthew Chapter 7. I hate to bring you that kind of news, but the time is now running so short. And I know for a fact, because I've been doing this now for 25, 28 years, and nobody's paying any attention to it, 
your blood's not on my hands. I've put it out there on the web for years and years and years. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing Jesus is going to do about it. He says if you uh, don't want to do what he said, that's fine with him. He's not going to lose any tears over it at the time. He says I don't want anyone to go to hell, but if they choose to, that's where they can go. What did he say in the very beginning? If you hear my words and you don't do them, you're very, very foolish. However, if you hear my words and you do them, you're very, very wise. And yet, I wrote a whole series on my blog, The Redaction of Christ. All the preachers, teachers, and evangelists that I can find out there have redacted these words of Jesus Christ. They're not in there. Their salvation doctrine is absolutely, totally, completely false. I followed their doctrine until the Lord got a hold of me and said, hey, wait a minute, Stuart. Wait a minute. There's a whole lot more to this than you realize. And boy, was he ever correct. And uh, I've written books on this one, one called The Mystery of Christ. It's available in paperback. The Poor Lost Christian, that's also available in paperback. And now we have Frequency, um, The Hidden Matrix, book one, is in paperback. And we're working on Frequency, The Mind Matrix. All of these, I, I ask anybody, uh, prove it wrong. Prove it wrong. And you can't. I know you can't prove it wrong. Jesus said what he said. People don't like what he said. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, you can sit there, and I do get these emails. Well, you're just being an idiot, and that's not the way it is. Well, unfortunately, it is the way it is. And if people want to uh, deny Jesus Christ, fine with me. Go ahead and deny it. Call me a fake. Call me a false preacher. I could care less if that's what you want to uh, call me on uh, emails and whatnot. And I've been being hammered for years and years, like Larry's been hammered for years and years on what he presents. Uh, people don't like it. They don't want to face the truth. Now, what has all this got to do with the prophecy I read you? Everything. The Christians are totally apostate. They're totally disobedient. Why do people think Jesus Christ is not going to judge them? Judgment begins at the house of the Lord. It doesn't begin with people like Clapper and Brennan and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and all these other communists out there. It begins at the house of the Lord. That's why Trump is here. He's going to judge America. Anyway, uh, it's just kind of very, very interesting how all of this fits together. And uh, it's fitting together now. All the puzzle pieces are so rapidly coming together. It's just amazing. And uh, the stuff that you're hearing on the news today and everything else, I'm telling you, we are headed in to a war unlike any other war, to a surprise, sudden destruction, unlike any other sudden destruction that the world has ever seen. And millions, and I do mean millions of Christians, so-called, are not going to heaven. And all you got to do is read the scriptures to find out why they're not going to to heaven. Jesus tells you why. They're non overcomers. Look up the word overcome or overcomer in scripture and find out what it means. It means to have fought a battle and to have overcome or won that war. That's what it means. How is there a battle? with simply believing something or simply putting your faith in something. That's not a battle.
try doing what Jesus Christ told you to do, and you're going to find out exactly who Satan is and how much of a war you're going to get yourself involved in. It's scary, but Jesus is on your side. God is on your side. You can win this war. It's not easy, but you can win it. And uh, the Christians of America have bought into all these fakes out there that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars. They have their own airports. They have their luxury mansions. They fly around in jet aircraft. I don't recall Jesus having an aircraft. I thought he came in Jerusalem on a donkey. That's kind of a far cry from a jet aircraft that cost $40 million or $150 million. And yet people are falling for this junk. These people are liars. They're fleeced. They're doing exactly what Peter said they'd do. They're making merchandise of ignorant Christians of which now America is basically filled with them. And all I can tell you folks out there in, in, uh, in America land, and I know we have listeners all over the world and also deep state listens, do what Jesus Christ told you to do, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll find eternal life. If you won't, you're going to find eternal death. Not my words, his words. And if you can't stand his words, you might as well burn the Bible, put it in a fireplace, burn it up, and go out and enjoy yourself, because it's going to be the last enjoyment you'll ever have. Uh, America, the good times are over. We are now at the precipice of war, revolution, and destruction. And yet the vast majority of Americans just party on. Like nothing is happening. End of uh, end of the lecture. <laughs> how you doing there, Larry? Oh, hanging in there. I was just thinking how today I went down to the store and and uh, had to dodge all kind of uh, party vehicles and and uh, vehicles loaded with uh, their toys and and pulling campers and all of this. You know, going into their big Memorial Day weekend and and they're clueless. Absolutely clueless. I mean, we are on a precipice, and uh, they're still partying away all around me. Yeah, it's it's just amazing. It really is. Uh, no clue as to what's going on. You know, they're wearing. Uh, you know how you put a, a horse halter on, and they got those things that so they can't see out the side to spook them. They can only see right in front. That's kind of like the American people. They have these halters on with their, uh, so they can't see only what's in, under their nose. And unfortunately, uh, that prophecy I read uh, where God says, I'm not with you anymore, I've done that for some time. He's turned his back on the United States. We are going to uh, run into some trouble. And, you know, that prophecy about uh Ronald Reagan and uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, you know, this is really the way the Lord works. So we have these carriers over there, and he said they're going to suffer the same fate. I think they are. Too many Christians have had these visions known for a number of years. In fact, one of them, I think, was like 10, 12 years ago that a lady said she saw the Lord showed her that an entire aircraft carrier and, and part of its fleet were sunk to the bottom of the ocean. And here we have uh, one of the Iranian leaders saying, I can sink the entire fleet with one bomb. Uh <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Well, yeah, uh, to go along with what you were talking about, uh, Michael Boldea Jr. put out an interesting word, May the 23rd. Let me read it here. It's uh, 50 yes. little sentences. And, and I made notes, and this is my notes. from. And he had a big article, but, you know, I just made notes. Basically, this is what he was getting at. He says, there is a war on today against everything. 
and uh, and of course we know Stuart. Uh, you know, if you watch the news, or you watch you know what's going on. No matter what you do, it's always wrong unless you're on the left. I mean, everything going on is under attack. I mean, they even after John Wayne, I sent you a video today. <laughs> CNN oh, and, and they're after John Wayne over something he said multitudes of years ago, forty or fifty years ago. I mean, they've lost their minds. They want to take well, they down probably John want to Wayne dig him up. Yeah, and, they probably want to yeah. dig him up, chew him out, and then they'll bury him again. I mean, the, <laughs> there is an insanity, folks, that has risen up in the United States that's going to turn. I'm, I'm warning you right now, the same form of insanity is going to turn on the Christians. This is what's coming. This is a satanic um, mindset, I guess. What would you say, Larry? I think that's a satanic thing from start to finish. Yeah, yeah, and, and really the, the Christian peoples should be seeing through this and, and battling. And, and we've charged people before, go out and get on the Internet, uh, go to warfare, pray, uh, fast, uh, you know, intercede, uh, be a prayer mm-hmm. warrior, et cetera, et cetera. And we banged our heads on the wall, Stuart, for so long. But let me read this to you. It's really interesting, my notes. It, uh, this is Michael Bodea. He says, there is a war on today against everything. Why are the Christians so silent these days? The Internet is a battleground. And this, then he made this comment, and Stuart, this really caught my ear. He said, if you never pick a fight with a giant, you will never slay a giant. What do you think? <laughs> That's about right. Kind of like David and his uh, stones, little round stones, and Goliath out there bellowing at him. And David knew perfectly well he was going to kill him. I mean, that's that's the faith and the belief in the Lord in operation. Uh, I don't know if you ever played sports, Larry, but I used to play baseball. And I would know before I went up to the plate that I was going to hit a home run. I just knew it. And David knew he was going to kill Goliath, and he had the other four stones there in case his brothers decided they wanted to take him on too. He was ready for him, But we don't fight anymore. We're a bunch of wusses, and there is no fight in the Christians because, well, I believe they aren't Christians. I really don't believe. They're part of a church, but Jesus has two divisions for them, obedient, and disobedient, overcomers, non-overcomers, pew warmers versus those in the trench. And most of them are just pew warmers today. And as I said before, all you got to do is look at some of these evangelists that are out there strutting around. Look at their lifestyle and compare it. Like Peter says, their damnation slumbers not. Well, what about the followers of these people? I don't understand this. I I guess this must be the height of apostasy. But anyway, uh, what else did he have to say? Well, that was pretty much his uh, his article. You know, he was writing about uh, basically America and the Christians in America and how they just don't engage. They haven't engaged. They don't have. But, you know, like you said, when you opened up the show, you said, how could, you know, basically you were saying, uh, how could they engage? They don't even know who they're fighting for. You know, not really. Yeah. No, they don't. In fact, I guess a good share of them don't even believe Satan exists. They don't believe in Satan. I was, I read some of those uh, articles where they polled people. And a huge number of Christians don't believe Satan even exists. Well, if Satan doesn't exist, then Jesus Christ was a total lunatic. Because he he really felt that Satan did. In fact, I think he knew Satan did exist. And he came down to rescue us from Satan's clutches. And yet, here we have a foundation for the Christian faith. They don't even believe in the very basic foundations of the faith. I don't even think they know what the foundations of the faith are. That's how, when you get these people, like Peter says, they snuck in unaware. They infiltrate 
I w- talked to a pastor who had come out of seminary, and uh, I was talking to him. Where there were other people around in, at the table, and I just asked him. I said, "Well, uh, what Bibles do you study? King James or the new newer ones?" He says, "We don't study the Bible." I said, "What?" He says, no, we study the commentaries on the Bible. So evidently, for the most part, they don't pick up a Bible and read it for themselves. I said, well, in fact, he told me during that, he says, I'm not really sure that the Bible is actually the Word of God. And he's a pastor. My word, folks, you go into a church, you better make sure the pastor at least knows something or you better not be putting your money in the plate because what you're doing when you put your money in the plate with these apostates is you're being part of it you're part of this you better separate yourself from those kind of folks Uh, jesus told you what to do you know when noah was preparing for the flood he separated himself from the rest of the people around there and about went off by himself, built his boat, and to the saving of his family. Uh, Jesus Christ calls on the Christians to separate themselves from this world, and they don't want to do that. They're, they're in the world. They're, they're doing everything in the world. When, when Larry and I give you the news, you've got to remember one thing about the news. It's all in the matrix. It's all designed to keep you occupied, to keep you from escaping the matrix a person's job as i see it in this life from birth to death is to get out of that matrix first of all and then he'll give you something to do once you've done that but nobody wants to get out of the matrix they're they're in love with this planet they're in love with everything on it and uh, it's just too bad anyway let's get to the headline trump sending ground troops to middle east Iran general says their hand is on the trigger. We got to be on the precipice of war. And I think he's got more, Trump has sent far more troops over there than he says. Well, do I, don't, I don't know. You know uh, that, Hal Turner's post actually says that Trump to send 3,000 additional troops to the Middle East, reportedly the first of a larger deployment. And uh, I'm reading from the internet, basically anywhere from uh, 15, you know, some are saying 1,500, some are saying uh, 2,500, some, you know, say 3,000, and some are saying almost 10,000. So I don't know if anybody knows what's going on, actually, uh, but it does appear that, uh, and of course we know that Trump has left the U.S. and he's gone to Japan for a four- or five-day deal there. And uh, what's interesting, just before he left, though, Ynet News, and guess where? Out of Israel. We're not hearing it in America, but Israel is reporting that defying Congress, President Donald Trump, sets massive arms sale to Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Jordan. And there are $8 billion worth of weapons being uh, delivered to them uh, and he's circumventing Congress by doing this. And these weapons, I've seen the, some of the lists here, and these are missiles, anti-missiles, uh, anti-tank missiles. This is war. This is warcraft that's being delivered, Stuart. But uh, the American people, they don't have a clue. Yeah, and I wonder how many other troops he's actually got over there, because carriers and uh, support ships, if there's two carriers, what do they hold, 5,000 people, those big carriers? Well, probably probably, probably a lot more than that. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, Depka Files reporting that uh, Trump has pulled all of the Marines out of Jordan and moved them into Iraq, and it appears, if nothing changes, that The beginning of this war will start with the proxy locations of Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Wow. Then there was, uh, what's his name, Young Brandt, who had a long time ago, back in 1983 or something like that, had a prophecy about us going to war over there. 
Yeah, with Iran. I think he mentioned Iran, that we would get involved in a war. And then there's a couple of rabbis, hope we can get to it, that said, yes, we were going to get involved in a war with Iran. Uh, but here's what Trump said. He said, this is a national emergency because of tensions with Iran is clearing to sale billions of dollars worth of weapons, Saudi Arabia and other countries. Um, so he's using the national emergency to arm them. What about the border? If he can circumvent Congress on military hardware, why can't he do something about the border? Because they're dumping over, what is it, 150,000 of these so-called uh, illegals all over the nation? Oh, What's going on? Well, Stuart, uh, all of these, uh, the locusts are still coming in. Uh, could it be that he is not obligated to prophetically stop the surge of illegals into this country but yet he's going to protect, uh, if you will, Israel across the waters. Uh, you got to remember, uh, you know, prophetically we go to war, but also yes, we prophetically we get we get overrun too. Yep, yep. And uh, you can't really blame Trump. You can't blame Obama. You can't blame Clinton. You can't blame any of these people. If you want to blame somebody, folks, blame the Lord, because he says I'm going to fill you with alien people who are going to come into your country, and then when the time is right, and I think that time is pretty close, uh, we're going to rise up, and uh, we'll be hit from within, and we'll be hit from without, and America goes down with a thud. And if I remember Michael's uh, uh, father uh, had a lot to say about the taking of the United States, if I recall right. Isn't that right, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, Barry Rothman just put out a, I found a 2015 uh, Torah code that's really interesting. Yeah, go into that. I want to hear that. Yeah, you know, we're giving this information out, but, you know, the Torah code seems to uh, relate to the unseen entities that, you know, we're, we're talking about all of our enemies that surround us around the world, but there's another group of entities that surround America that wants to bring it down also. And the, here's the, uh, uh, there's actually two matrices. Number one is Barry Rockman, September 21st, 2015. He said, fallen America, who's behind its demise? And uh, number one on the matrix, it says America fallen. So right there, Stuart, what you've been saying for years is that America does fall. America yes, fallen, does. Yep. and then number two, the fallen giants and Nephilim, sons of Anak. Mm -hmm. Number three, with aliens. Number four, Netanyahu. Number five, UFO. Number six, Israel, and number seven, Iran. So what you find is a mixture, Stuart, in the Torah codes of of, of people and and circumstances and events that seem to bring America down, and it, it's a multitude of things. And actually, uh, Barry Rothman wrote in this in 2015. He says, why has our government in America betrayed its own people? And that was a question. And then in Matrix number two, uh, there's five in the code. It says, Mark McClellan, UFO, alien gods, to witness NASA. So what we're seeing is a lot of the reasons that America is being brought down is its associations and affiliations with alien gods and Nephilim and a lot of the unseen and the, the, even the aliens. I mean, the ETs. I mean, all of this is bringing America down. It, it's not one thing. It's a, it's a conglomeration of, of reasons. Yes. Um I think I've told the story before, but for those who have not, not listened previously a long, long time ago, when I was a professional pilot, I had a first officer who's, uh, who was a, uh, he died some time ago now. His name was Charles Hain, and uh, he went by the word Edward because that was his middle name, so he, he didn't like Charles. He liked Edward, <laughs> so everybody called him Ed. But anyway, we were flying aloft one night, and uh, he turned to me and he said, I got something I want to tell you. 
And I said, sure, Ed, what, what, what is it? And he start, related this story, which he insisted was absolutely true. This guy was a naval commander. And he said that uh, there had been a meeting with high-level civilians and uh, high-level military at an abandoned air base uh, somewhere in New Mexico or somewhere out west, somewhere. And um, he said this mothership came down. He he flew in a whole bunch of logistics and stuff at this place. And uh, he said a mother of huge, huge UFO came down and landed. And these executives of the highest level in our government and the military brass got on that craft, and he said they were on there for maybe four to five hours, and then they all got off and left, and the UFO took off, and boom, away it went. Um, I, he was of the impression, I think, that this was the one of the Eisenhower meetings where Eisenhower ducked out of public view. I don't know if he had a toothache, went to a dentist, got sick, whatever, but where he actually was, and they've named different air bases, but I think a lot of that is bogus, uh, to uh, draft up a treaty with these aliens. Now, a lot of people just roll their eyes and they say, well, this isn't possible. Well, of course it's possible. The Bible tells you about these people, these entities. They're fallen angels. They're posing as extraterrestrials. They aren't. They're interdimensionals. They're Satan's finest. It's a delusion. The Bible talks about a strong delusion that comes upon planet Earth. The apex of that delusion is going to be the arrival because what it deals with is evolution. It is to prove that because these entities all lived on different planets, they all look different, blah, blah, blah. You'll see that in Star Trek. You'll see it in all the sci-fi movies where you've got all these different weird-looking uh, creatures uh, intermingling with humans. That's evolution. Evolution is a lie. It's not possible. Evolution actually is not possible. And I, everybody's taught it. They're taught it in kindergarten, all the way through to the universities. Walk into any science museum. It's all evolution, evolution, evolution. Evolution actually is not possible. The Bible talks about creation and adaptation, not evolution. You have families, you got species. What Larry was talking about is exactly what I just said. These are, they have bought into this lie and they are being manipulated by Satan's finest uh, fallen angels into this war. They want America down. In fact, they want the whole human race gone. They want to be worshipped first. And they promise this golden age where we're going to be flying around and visiting all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. Where, where do you think Hitler got all his information from for anti-gravity devices? came from Satan, channeling. It's all a lie. It's all a deception. It's not that it isn't real. It's just that what it's being used for is to fool humanity. They're buying into it. That's interesting, Larry, that he found that in the Bible codes. Because it proves out everything we've thought anyway. Absolutely, it absolutely does. And and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I, what I found interesting too, I, I looked into it May of 2019. Uh, let's see if I can find it. No, it's uh, there's another tour code. Here it is. Uh, February 2012 tour code that uh, he originally ran with an attack on Iran. By Obama, Obama and Netanyahu planned to attack Iran and Syria. 
And when I look through that and see the words in the matrix, and then I remember, you got to remember this also. Remember that, that uh, Stuart, that the Pentagon is not using new plans of Donald Trump to go into the Middle East and go to war. They're using Obama's old plans. If, if people listen closely, they'll find out all these plans that Trump has used were on the shelf. They were pulled off the shelf. There wasn't Trump's. They were somebody else's. The Pentagon had, and he's been mm-hmm. implemented. So instead of instead of uh, actually an Obama attack on Iran, it appears that possibly under Trump an attack happened. But it but it clearly indicates that it was all pre-planned by deep state. Yeah, this all comes out of the New American Century stuff that, that was published. It's kind of like the Rand Corporation and their Homeland Security documents. Before Homeland Security came into existence, before 911, they had this on the shelf, and then they bring it out after the event, and uh, lo and behold, all of a sudden we have Homeland Security. It was all done ahead of time. This is all a sham, folks. You're being, <laughs> I don't know how to tell people. Even the people in a deep state, even you guys that listen, you're being, sh- you're being shammed. You don't understand what's going on. And uh, it's just a shame to watch uh, how people who, who love their country and they have no uh, incl- inclination of committing treason or anything are involved in all of this stuff, but they don't know what the end of it is. In fact, Isaiah says, you did not consider your latter end. When you were into all this skullduggery and stuff like that, it's the new American century. Take down of different uh, regimes. What are we doing with Iran? We're going to take down the regime. <laughs> we're setting it up for the bioregion over there. That's all this is all about. The UN, Club of Rome, all of this stuff has all been planned long, long ago. Here's a headline. It's kind of interesting. Alien observation. Mankind has been under observation for thousands of years. UFOs and aliens are not the product of overactive imaginations. UFOs and aliens do exist. In fact, now the military has admitted it. Aliens continue to watch humans and have made contact with us many times. However, science, religion, and governments have withheld vast amounts of information about what UFOs and aliens are in order to protect their own interests. This is where the deception is coming in. UFOs and aliens are part of human history. They appear repeatedly in art forms from the time of cave drawings to the present. UFOs and aliens are mentioned in every religion since the dawn of time, even describing them in very similar fashions. Aliens and UFOs are recognized as real by the vast majority of humans. As you will read, many world leaders have also publicly admitted that UFOs exist. Now, this is kind of interesting in view of the acclimation project of the National Security Agency. Uh, They're trying to acclimate the people so that when the arrival comes, it won't be such a shock. And I believe the arrival is very, very close at hand, probably right after the war. I would say either they'll stop World War III at the height of it, or they'll come in just afterwards and say, we're we're not going to allow this anymore. You people have all got to unite. You've got to come together. You can't do this. Well, of course, there is no coming together until the Prince of Peace, whose name is Jesus Christ, is in the hearts of of humanity. It's not going to happen otherwise. And uh, anyway, they're talking about how we have been, uh, they're calling them extraterrestrials, ETs. Actually, they're fallen angels, just like the Bible says they are. Fallen Angel, X-Files revealed the paranormal roots of the Pentagon's UFO program. New revelations shed light on secret government investigations and histories unidentified inside America's UFO investigation. This has been going on, folks, for years and years and years. Now, I can't remember when that uh, naval commander told me the story 
that was years and years and years ago because I've been out of flying now for for many years. And uh, he insisted it was true. He he was one of those guys that I don't. I, he just couldn't tell a fib. If he might not like what he had to say, but <laughs> that'd be you know he's he's the kind of guy that wore wore himself out outside so. You knew exactly what you were dealing with, and and he said this was real, and he died shortly thereafter. And I think he want he may have known he was going to perish. Uh, it was on him, on his mind. It was on his heart. He felt he had to tell somebody uh, that he could trust that this was real. And so many people don't understand what's going on all around them. What do you want to add to that, Larry? Hello? Yeah, yeah. I, I think you okay. lost me for a second. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to mention, Stuart, uh, that uh, all of this is coming down, and we don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but I, wanted, I do want to take a moment and thank everybody that's tried to help me uh, and just give them an update that uh, we found a place to move to and that uh, we couldn't have done it without their help. Of course, it's not... Move, our move is not as quick as we wanted. It's being drawn out by circumstances, but I, I, the only reason I brought this up, Stuart, is to thank the people that's helped and also oh, to say that, that, that I believe that the Lord is moving me and my wife out of the way of something that's coming, and we're doing it for our safety. So I just want to use myself as an example. If there's anybody out there that the Lord begins to deal with that they need to relocate, and they need to take that seriously because he will, Amos 3 and 7 clearly says that he'll let you know before something happens, and it's possible that he might move other people also out of the way of what's coming. Absolutely. I think the final phase of all of this, depending on on status and where you are and what the Lord knows is coming, I mean, what's going to happen to the United States is horrific, folks, and it's it's already begun. I mean, when you, I was reading an article today about the uh, the flooding and how the farmers, many of them haven't even gotten out into the fields at all. And now they're worried about an early frost, an early winter. Well, do you realize how much food that is going to curtail? Uh, we're, we're entering in, Larry and I for years have used the term, um, what did we call it? Silent famine? Stealth I can't famine. remember what we called it. Stealth famine. Stealth, yes, yeah, stealth famine. And it's not going to be so stealthy anymore. It's creeping up on the American people, and the prices are going to start going up. So, you know, go get enough to stand by for at least three months, if not six. Uh, there's no way people can, you know, they, they're trying to, tell you you can store up for three four years uh, I don't see how you could myself I just it's beyond me how, how anybody can do that but uh, this this is really gonna they're tying us down as surveillance they're tying us down with banks credit cards debit cards all of that they're slowly bringing the noose around the American neck and they're going to put the squeeze on real soon. They'll have their excuses. They always have their excuses to why they're doing it. So just beware, because none of this stuff that's really dangerous to the freedoms of the American people has ever been touched at all. To the contrary, they're tightening that noose. And uh, uh, just a warning to the wise. What else have you got? I hear NOAA predicts near normal 2019 Atlantic hurricane season. And you just had an earthquake down your way. What, tell us about that. What happened? Oh, yeah, we've been we've been having a lot of earth movement and, and activity. Uh, some of it is four or above in, in magnitude, and uh, a lot of this is ongoing. And I looked today at the map of the USA, and I only saw one earthquake, Stuart. That is not relieving pressure. That means yeah. something is building, and there are a lot of reports. Uh, even Stan Dale and them talking about something on the West Coast uh, that, that's coming. They know it's coming. 
And, uh, you know, like you said, you, you know, you and I were talking, and you said if nothing else, people can get soup. And they can get just oatmeal. I mean, it's better than nothing. Yes. Yep, you can live on it for a while. Uh, the final thing. Trump moves to escalate investigation of intel agencies. Folks, we are moving into an area of a false flag. If uh, we don't know whether the Lord is going to allow Trump to do this and expose it all, he says he will. Uh, but what happens, who knows? Uh, but this is a very dangerous time because if they want to stop Trump, they've got to do something to get everybody's attention diverted from it. That's how they operate. That's what they do. And uh, this is going to get very, very dangerous as well as very fascinating to see how um, the powers that be fight it out <laughs> in Washington. What, what would you say about that, Larry? Well, I would say exactly right. I can't say who told me. I can tell you offline, uh, but I can't say. But in the last couple of days, I got an email from someone that knows a number of insiders, and he's, they're being, he's being told that uh, there's a false flag very, very close to happening and that Trump already knows about it and is preparing for it. And so what you just said is is appears to be there's some – there's some uh, evidence behind the scenes that this is an ongoing thing. Yeah, I don't see how they cannot do it. Uh, I suppose you could start the big war. Uh, I wrote a blog on some uh, some fellow on uh, YouTube. He he did some really interesting thing about uh, uh, the Omar feast that goes for 49 days and how uh, trouble has always begun usually within a week of the 17th of Omar as they count it. And it's very, very interesting how all that fits together, more so because of what we're hearing. UN-Iran conflict intensifies amid talks of troop deployment. And as you just said, he's sending over all kinds of stuff. That's probably the uh, Arab-NATO group that's forming. Uh and another thing, Russia announces delivery of more supplies to Venezuela's military. So they are hunkering down in Venezuela. We're being surrounded, folks. We're being surrounded just exactly as the Bible prophets said we would be. So it's, it's just too bad. What, uh, what What's your final word there, Larry? Yeah, we've got to kind of keep an eye open, too, because the rabbis have recently found some ancient text over 800 years old that seem to reveal that Trump will go against Iran and that this war will begin a world war that will literally uh, devastate the world, is what they're saying. That's the rabbis. Yeah, we can get into that maybe next week, but that that's kind of interesting that uh, they uh, did say that that's exactly what uh, that was, what, 800 years ago that we yeah. would get into this terrible, terrific war with Iran. And uh, it looks like that's exactly what's going on. Uh, who knows when? You know, we get there, things cool off, and it's really up to the hand of the Lord. And uh, I hope everybody listened to what Larry had to say. If the Lord is urging you or making circumstances so that you must move, then it's to get you out of the way of safety or of harm and somewhere in safety. Uh, just follow the, the leading of the Lord and all this. If he's not telling you to move, then you stay where you are. And he will also arrange that so that you can stay where you are. Uh, but I would not go flying off on a whim, make sure you confirm it with the Lord. Uh, a short story, a person was on an island where a huge hurricane was coming. This is a true story. And um, th they wanted to move, and the Lord says, no, stay where you are. I don't want you to move. They were a direct hit. Didn't hurt them at all, but it damaged everything around them. So that's how that works. The Lord tells you to stay where you are, that's where you stay. If he's telling you to move through circumstance, and that's usually how he works it, 
then you move. Anyway, thanks a lot, Larry, for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for listening. A heads up. Uh, we'll just keep you posted if we hear anything. Anyway, good night, everyone. Take care.